Welcome again. Right now we're at Romans chapter 7, the sinner's struggle. Now, initially I was going to break this down in a few bite-sized pieces, but you know, we really need to read the whole thing to really get a good grasp of what Paul is trying to say here. Let's read it. Or don't you know, brothers, for I speak to men who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man for as long as he lives. For the woman that has a husband is bound by the law to the husband while he lives. But if the husband dies, she is discharged from the law of the husband. So then, if, while the husband lives, she is joined to another man, she would be called an adulteress. But if the husband dies, she is freed from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she is joined to another man. Therefore, my brothers, you also, now this here is key here because Paul is joining two ideas together. You also, and likewise, you were made dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you would be joined to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we might produce fruit to God. Now let's break down this analogy. Paul says if a woman is married to a husband, she is bound to that husband as long as the husband lives. If she marries another man while that husband is still alive, well, she becomes an adulteress. But if that husband dies and she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Notice that there is the law that is still in effect over the woman whether or not the husband is alive or dead. Paul draws an analogy between the woman and the husband to the believers in Jesus and the pre-crucified Christ compared to the believers in Jesus and the post-resurrected Christ. But notice, the law was still in effect over the woman, whether or not that husband was alive or dead. In the same way, the law of God is still in effect over us. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions, which were through the law, worked in our members to bring out fruit to death. But now we have been discharged from the law, having died to that in which we were held, so that we serve in newness of the spirit and not in oldness of the letter. If all you have is the letter, if all you have is the Torah or the law without really catching the spirit of the Torah or the law, then it is pretty much dead. What you got to do is you got to catch the spirit of Torah. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? May it never be. However, I wouldn't have known sin except through the law, for I wouldn't have known coveting unless the law had said, you shall not covet. And that is found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 17, and Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 21. But sin, finding occasion through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of coveting. For apart from the law, sin is dead. I was alive apart from the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. The commandment which was for life, this I found to be for death. For sin, this is the problem. Sin here is the problem, not the law. Finding occasion through the commandment deceived me, and through it killed me. Therefore, the law indeed is holy, and the commandment holy, righteous, and good. Very, very important to understand. For the law indeed is holy, and the commandment holy righteous and good, okay? You should never throw out that which is holy, righteous, and good. Notice Paul is pointing to sin as the problem, not the law whatsoever. He makes this very clear. Did then that which is good become death to me? Now, considering what we just read in the past few sentences, a lot of people would draw the conclusion that the law brings death. Let's see what Paul says about this. Did then that which is good become death to me? May it never be. But sin, but sin. This is violation of the law. This is the problem. Violation of the law of God. Not the law of God. The law is holy, righteous, just, and good. 
But sin, that it might be shown to be sin, was producing death in me through that which is good, that through the commandment sin might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual. Wow, this is awesome. Because you see, a lot of Christians think, well, if you obey the law, if you are trying to obey the law that's like like working and that's of the flesh you know we're supposed to go by the spirit and not of the torah we're not supposed to be of the letter not of the torah not of the law of god but we're supposed to be led by the spirit of god now this is not what paul said here paul said the law is spiritual and indeed it is Everything that is in the law, every word that is spoken by God is spoken by the Spirit of God. The Torah of God, the law of God is 100% of the Spirit of God. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am fleshly, sold under sin. Now you got to realize here that Paul is always changing hats here, okay? We will read in another epistle where he says that he's absolutely blameless, blameless according to the law, like he doesn't sin, okay? So you got to understand the writing style of Paul, how Paul talks, how Paul writes. He changes hats, okay? Like he did in another epistle where he said, I speak as a fool. He spoke as a fool. Now he's speaking as a sinner. For I don't know what I am doing. For I don't practice what I desire to do, but what I hate, that I do. But if what I don't desire, that I do, I consent to the law that it is good. So now it is no more I that do it, but sin which dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For desire is present with me, but I don't find it doing that which is good. For the good which I desire, I don't do. But the evil which I don't desire, that I practice. But if what I don't desire, that I do, it is no more I that do it, but sin which dwells in me. I find then the law that to me, while I desire to do good, evil is present. For I delight in God's law. How many of you say that? How many Christians do you know of say, I delight in the Torah? For I delight, delight in God's law after the inward person, but I see a different law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity under the law of sin which is in my members. Notice here, Paul specifically makes a distinction that he's talking about a law and a law. He's talking about God's law and the law of sin. Totally different laws here. What a wretched man I am. Who will deliver me out of the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve God's law. I myself serve God's law. But with the flesh, sin's law. Now, you got to make a distinction because a lot of times Paul's talking about the law where it's talking about sin's law. Not God's law, not Torah. And notice here, Paul says, I serve God's law. How many Christians do you know actually say, I serve God's law? And don't miss the next portion, Romans chapter 8. Paul says some amazing things in Romans chapter 8 against sin, about righteousness, and about the victory that we have in Yeshua. Until then, keep seeking God with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.